Hi everyone and welcome to this oil painting demo. This was a recent commission that I was hired to paint and her name is Georgia and she has very unique eyes. She recently passed and this is why I was commissioned to paint her. So I painted her in oils and I transferred her drawing onto a toned canvas and let that dry before I started painting. So what I'm doing now is I'm applying a base layer and I make sure that it's a very thin base layer. I am um, thin it out with liquid and I just want to make sure that I cover everything before I could start detailing. Georgia was a black cat but I never use black straight up from the tube to paint my blacks. The only time I'll use paint from a black tube is if I mix it into another color. So to achieve my blacks what I usually do is I use blues and browns. So I'll use burnt umber with cobalt blue and in this situation that's what I did. I mixed my cobalt blue with some burnt umber. If you want a cooler black just add more blue and if you want a warmer black you can add more brown and then depending on what you're painting you can add other colors in there. So for Georgia I had cobalt blue and burnt umber for my black mixture. And for the pink part of the ears, I use white with a little bit of burnt sienna, a little bit of burnt umber, and a little bit of cadmium red. And I just mix it until I get the right color. And so I want to make sure I get a good base layer down. Like I said, I get it all thin. I don't want it thick at this point because when you're painting with oils, it's important to remember the fat over lean rule. You always want to have your thinnest layers first and your thickest layers saved for the end. And the first few layers of an oil painting are always what I call the ugly stage. It doesn't start looking good until I have a few layers on and start detailing towards the end. I'm really not concerned with detail at this stage. I'm just applying a few good layers and once I've got my solid layers on and I'm satisfied, then I could start detailing. This is something you'll just learn from experience and you'll know when you can start detailing when you're ready to start detailing. The key is to have patience and to just keep layering until you have a nice looking painting. Now at this point, before I can continue adding more paint, I make sure that each layer is dry. I never want to start applying more paint until this, the previous layer is dry. Otherwise, I'm just going to create mud and the paint won't apply nicely and I, especially if I'm trying to work fine details. So I make sure that everything is dry before I can continue applying more paint. So in this situation my eyes were dried and now I can start adding a little bit more detail and making them look a little bit more like realistic cat eyes. But they're still far from done at this stage. And when I'm working small areas such as the eyes like this, I usually use either a zero brush or a number two brush. Usually fine liners or round liners. You want to make sure you have a small enough brush that you can have very fine details. If your brushes are too big, you just might make a mess inside. So you want something that you'll be able to work inside a small area such as the eyes and the nose. And so now I'm building up my layers and I always start off darker and work from dark to light. And this brush here is a Filbert. It's a number four black silver by Dynasty and it's my absolute favorite Filbert. It's not expensive, it's a reasonable price and I find it lasts the longest. I've gone through so many Filbert brushes. Usually filbert brushes last me maybe four paintings, five paintings max, and then I have to toss them out. So I hesitate spending a lot of money on filbert brushes now. I prefer something that's a decent lower price. That way it doesn't hurt so much when I have to throw them out. But I was pleasantly surprised last year when I bought this type of brush for the first time and I found out that it lasted a lot longer than my other filbert brushes, even my expensive natural fiber filberts. And I like how it keeps its nice flat shape and because of this I'm able to paint nice hairs and build up my layers and I can build up layers of hair a lot more quickly than just using a fine liner brush. 
And as you can see, for this layer of fur that I'm starting to build up, it looks quite blue on the screen. It's not as blue in person, but I took my black mixture, I added a little bit of white, and I did add more blue. So it is blue, just not as vivid as it appears here. Whenever you're painting blacks, and depending on your subject, you might want to incorporate blues and mauves, and then even other colors such as browns, maybe reds. It depends what you're painting. So for this painting here, I stuck to mostly blues and mauves. And here I'm continuing to apply another layer of fur down on George's neck and chest. Again with my bluish mixture. And I'm just going to keep working it down. And I'm overlapping those hairs and I'm crisscrossing them. I am following the direction that the hair is growing in or the fur is growing in. But I don't want perfectly straight uniform hairs. I want some to twist and have different shapes and curves and overlap each other. This way it looks a lot more natural than just directly painting straight lines everywhere. And by using my filbert brush, I am able to cover more territory more quickly because I can quite easily paint longer hairs on her chest and neck. And it's equally as good to paint tiny hairs as well as I go up on her, her chin and her cheeks and other areas that shorter hairs are needed, such as here. It's just a really beautiful brush to work with. And this size here, like I said, it's a number four. If you're working on a larger painting and you're covering even more territory, you might want to use something like a number eight. They do come in different sizes, so just choose the size that you need for whatever size painting you're working with. I'm also being selective about where I'm applying my strokes. I want to keep some areas darker to create shadows. So since it's already darker, I want to make sure I leave those areas untouched or with as little as little hairs as possible. And now that the previous layer on the eyes is dry, I could start adding more details. And so I'm just going to add in all those interesting little patterns and colors. And these will make the eyes look a lot more realistic. I'm adding a little bit of blue here, which is picking up reflections from the sky. She was photographed outside, so the blue is reflecting the sky in her eyes. And she has an interesting pattern in this eye with a lot of brown patches. And these dark brown patches are caused by hyperpigmentation. And when I detail inside the eyes, what I'll often do is take up an old beat up brush. I make sure it's really soft and I'll use it to mop up excess paint or to smooth out paint. And this will make all my details look a lot softer. And now I am going to darken on top of the eyes just to make sure that I have the proper shadowing. And this is helping to make my eyes more realistic and give them the proper form and shape. And by the way, if you haven't already, I would really appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up and if you subscribe to my channel, it really helps out us artists. And now I'm just lightening up the lower lids and adding a little bit more shine to the fur. Every layer gets lighter and lighter. And I'm just adding a little bit more white here to the reflection in the eye. And it just helps to make them sparkle even more. I want to make sure that I get all those interesting patterns and details inside the eye as accurately as possible. And I'm also adding a little bit more highlighting on the nose and on any animal that I work with. When I'm applying the final layers of hair, I usually pull out my smaller brushes. So usually either a number two, but more often a zero because it is my smaller brush. And using very gentle pressure, I start penciling, and not penciling in, but painting in very fine hairs. I don't want to apply too much pressure. If I apply too much pressure at this point with a fine brush, I'm just going to make blobs, and that's not what I'm going for. I want very fine lines. So whenever you're painting fine lines, or you want a very fine detail, make sure that you use very gentle pressure. Don't push too hard. And when I work on this part of an animal's head, I usually like to flip my painting upside down and it makes it a lot easier for me to follow the direction that the hair is growing in. And as you can see at this point, I had painted the background white and I really loved it white. Later on, the client decided she wanted it a darker green, so I did change it to dark green, but I really did prefer the white if I must say. 
And for the longer ear hairs, I'm again using my filbert. And now I flipped it to this side to continue with these details. And here's the final painting, the beautiful Georgia, except this time with the greener background. I hope you enjoyed this. And again, if you did, please make sure you give this a like and subscribe to my channel. Until next time, take care everyone.